Want to speak real Hebrew from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at HebrewPod101.com. Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekalei Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. Over the next 20 lessons, you'll learn everything there is to know about reading and writing Hebrew. By the end, you'll even be able to read some portions of the Hebrew Bible. Are you ready? So let's start. Bow natchil. Hebrew has only one alphabet of 22 letters, so it's super easy. Once you know this, a few variations and a simple vowel system, you will be ready to read one of the most ancient languages in the world. As you may know, the Hebrew writing system is written from right to left. At first, this may seem intimidating or confusing, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. Let's start with the first letter, Aleph. What sound does Aleph make? In Hebrew, the name of each letter starts with the sound you use to pronounce it, which means the sound of Aleph is A. Ah. It is handwritten like this. Now, in Hebrew, there are always two ways to write a letter, the written way, which is used in everyday handwriting, and the print way, which you will see in books and newspapers, on signs, and so forth. This is the written way. The print version looks like this. When Israeli kids first learn how to write, they use this print typewriting. It's useful, and as you'll see later, very easy to learn both versions of every letter. Let's do it again. Here's the written form. And here's the print form. You can now write your first letter in Hebrew. Good, let's move on. The second character is Bet. The sound of Bet is B, and it looks like this. Pay attention to the dot, it has to be in the middle. The print version is like this. If you leave out the dot, bet becomes vet. The sound of vet is v, but we don't count vet as a separate letter in the alphabet. So far you've studied two letters of the Hebrew Aleph Bet, and you've learned three sounds. Wanna write them once again? Let's do it. Okay, here is Aleph. This is handwritten. Aleph in print. And now Bet, handwritten. and bet in print. Then vet, handwritten. Vet in print style. Did you know you can already write a word in Hebrew? This is Abba. Abba in Hebrew means father. It is the first word every Israeli baby says. These are the simplest phonetic sounds. Try it out. Abba in handwriting. And now the print style. Abba. Great job! In this lesson, you learned the first two letters of the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph, Bet. You also practice your first word, in both print and writing styles. Before we move on to the next lesson, I want to introduce the Hebrew vowel system. Among 22 Hebrew letters, there are five vowels, one of which we learned in this lesson. But beside those five, there is another vowel system called Nikud. Nikud are a series of dots or points that are used to indicate vowel sounds connected to consonants. 
Once you have more experience reading Hebrew, you may not see these symbols so often in native texts. But if you can master them when you start learning Hebrew, it will make learning Hebrew much faster and easier. Then it could take the form of dots, lines, and combinations of the two, and are written in, under, on top, or beside consonant letters. Sound complicated? Don't worry, we'll take it slowly, and by the end of this series, they will seem easy. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Have you been writing as you watch? Hope so. There is no better way to master the alphabet quickly than to write them yourself. I also recommend that you make flashcards for each letter and study them whenever you get a chance. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Ivrit Beshalosh Dakot, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. In this series, we're going to learn basic Hebrew expressions. It's super easy, and it only takes three minutes. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to introduce yourself in Hebrew. In Hebrew, there is no formal and informal language. You can use this introduction in both cases and keep it simple. However, in Hebrew, there is a difference between male and female language. Let's first see how Israeli people introduce themselves in a simple way. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Od. Hi, I'm Yana, it's a pleasure. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. Start by saying Shalom, Ani, then saying your name. Shalom, Ani Yana. Finally say Naim Meod. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod. And now let's see the same sentence if you wish to be more specific in addressing the person you are introduced to. If you're introducing yourself to a woman, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod Lehakir Otach. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod Lehakir Otach. If you are talking to a man, you should say, Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim Meod Lehakir Otcha. Hi, I'm Yana. It's a pleasure to meet you. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim Meod Lehakir Otcha. So, what has changed from the previous introduction? Let's take a close look at this together. The last part of the introduction has been changed based on the gender of the person you are talking to. Shalom, Ani Yana. Naim Meod Lehakir Otach for a woman, versus Shalom, Ani Yana, Naim Meod Lehakir Otcha, for a man. Ani, in this case, has not been changed, and in both cases stands for I am, regardless of your gender. The last sounds of the last word changes, however. Otach, if you are talking to a woman, and Otcha, if you are speaking to a man. One more time, the simple way to introduce yourself in Hebrew is Shalom, Aniyana, Naim Meod. In case you want to personalize the greeting, you say, Shalom, Aniyana, Naim Meod, Lehakir Otach. Shalom, Aniyana, Naim Meod, Lehakir Otcha. Now it's time for Yana's insights. When you introduce yourself, it's a good habit to shake hands in Israel. If you don't want to worry about using the right word for men and women, just say Naim Meod as I said at the beginning of this lesson. There is no cultural importance if you add the last part to the introduction. It just makes the sentence more complete. Hi everyone, my name is Yara, and today we're gonna do uh, top Hebrew phrases. These are very useful phrases you're gonna hear a lot when you come to Israel, so uh, make sure to memorize them. Okay, let's start. Shalom. Hello. Shalom literally means peace but we use it also as a greeting. Shalom. Manishma, how are you? Uh, that's a very casual way of asking how are you, and it literally means what is heard. Like, yeah, like what have you been up to, what's going on with you? Manishma. Toda. Thanks. And probably the only way to say it, we don't have like thanks or thank you, it's just toda. Bevakasha. Please. Bevakasha, it means please, 
but it can also mean there you go. So you can say, אפשר לקבל מים בבקשה? Can I have water please? And when you give someone water, you can also say, בבקשה, there you go. סליחה, excuse me. Uh, it means excuse me or sorry. So when you like push through people in the bus, you can go, mm, סליחה, סליחה, סליחה. Uh, but when you step on someone on the bus, you can also say, אוי, סליחה, I'm sorry. להתראות, see you. It literally means to see each other again. So it's like, to see each other again. להתראות. <laughs> uh, it's also very casual. בסדר. Okay. This is a very, very useful word. You can say it when someone asks you, how are you? בסדר. You can say it to show you understand something. When someone gives you direction, you're like, בסדר. Uh, it literally means in order. Like everything's in order. טוב. Fine. Uh, most of the time it means fine. Literally it means good. A lot like בסדר. How are you? טוב. To respond to a direction, like, uh, go that way, please. טוב. Fine, I understand. על לא דבר. You're welcome. We use it as you're welcome, and it literally means, oh, for nothing. Thank you. Oh, a lot of all. It was nothing. It's maybe a bit more formal than בבקשה. Most of the times when people say תודה, you answer בבקשה. You can also answer a lot of all. It's pretty much the same, though בבקשה is a bit more common. בוקר טוב. Good morning. בוקר טוב, uh, which literally means good morning, and you obviously use it in the morning. בוקר טוב. לילה טוב. Good night. So yeah, good night you can say uh, when you leave a party at night, you know, you can say, okay, bye, good night, לילה טוב. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. צהריים טובים. Good afternoon. You can definitely say that. But you don't hear it that often. It literally means good noon. Ma Shimcha, what's your name? For a male, it would be Ma Shimcha. For a female, Ma Shmech, what is your name? You can also ask, Ech uh, Kurim Lach, which literally means how are you called? And this is the most common way to ask. Naim Lehakir, nice to meet you. Literally, I guess it would mean pleasant. It is pleasant to meet you. And you can say Naim Lakir Otach for a woman or Naim Lakir Otcha for a man. A4. Where? A4 Hatachana. Where is the station? A4 is very important. You should memorize this one. Ani Mevin. I see. For a woman, it would be Ani Mevina. I understand. I see. אני מבינה. מה השעה? What time is it? The literal translation would be, what is the hour? This is how you ask. סליחה, מה השעה? Excuse me, what time is it? אפשר בבקשה לקבל? Can I please have? אפשר בבקשה לקבל מים? Can I please have some water? And this would be the same uh, for a male speaker and for a female speaker. אפשר בבקשה לקבל? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? איפה השירותים? Where is the restroom? שירותים is restroom. איפה השירותים? Another one to memorize. אני מצטער. I am sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. אני מצטערת להפריע. I am sorry to interrupt. כן. Yes. You can... Use it in any way you use yes. Yeah, use it. Be positive. Lo. No. I like this word. It has a fun sound. And it was my sister's first word. Lo. No. Bali. I feel like. Bali. It's two words. Bali. And it means I feel like I want. And you can also use it as a negative. Bali glida. I feel like ice cream. I want ice cream. Lo bali. ללכת לבית הספר. I don't feel like going to school. So it's very useful. Children use it a lot, but grown-ups use it too. Die. Enough. Stop. Uh, it sounds really bad, but it's harmless. It means uh, enough or um, stop. 
when someone is like bugging you, poking you, like, die, stop it, enough. Yeah. Kama ze ole? How much is it? Kama ze ole? How much is it? How much does it cost? Meule. Awesome. Great. I guess maybe the Hebrew equivalent of the word awesome, uh, it's meule. The masculine form is meule and the feminine is meula. Like, haofa'a uh, zot meula. This show is awesome. It's great. Ech haya tiyul? Haya meule. How was the trip? It was meule. Great. Awesome. Okay, that's it for today for Top Hebrew Phrases. Thank you so much for watching. And what is your favorite Hebrew phrase? Tell us on the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Phrase. <laughs> I forgot my name. Hi, everybody. Yana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, just what is the difference between biblical and modern Hebrew? Now, you may be attracted to Hebrew for any number of reasons. Perhaps you want to communicate with friends or family, or maybe you've interested in studying the many religious and classical texts written in Hebrew. Depending on your reasons for learning Hebrew, you may end up learning one of two very different languages. Biblical or classical Hebrew was an ancient language that first emerged in the 10th century BC. Over the next centuries, the ancient Hebrew people used it to communicate and to take a record of their history, religion, philosophy, poetry, and culture. A portion of this literary record formed the basis of Hebrew scriptures and also what came to be called the Bible. During the Roman period, the language evolved beyond recognition and later fell out of use in daily life, but it lived on in religious contexts. Hebrew experienced a revival in the late 19th century as part of the larger Zionist movement. Thanks to the effort of Eliezer ben Yehuda, who prepared the first modern Hebrew dictionary, people started using Hebrew again to communicate with one another as they went about their lives. But because of the influence of European languages, Hebrew changed. Grammar, pronunciation, vocabulary, not a single aspect of the language went untouched by the transformation. And like any other modern language, Hebrew continues to change. So, for example, the word I or me in Biblical Hebrew is Anuchi. This same word has changed in modern Hebrew to Ani. Besides this change in pronunciation, modern Hebrew got a lot of new words from languages like French and German. For example, the word concrete or beton came from French while schnitzel or schnitzel came from German. And of course, there are new words to describe things that did not exist in ancient times, like electricity, chashmal, computer, machshev, car, mechonit, telephone, telephone. At this point in history, someone familiar only with Biblical Hebrew would not be able to communicate very well with contemporary native speakers. At the same time, a modern Hebrew speaker cannot easily read the Bible. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! Shalom, Ani Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's Aleph Bet Bekale Kalut, the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet, the Aleph Bet. In the last lesson, we learned the first two letters of the Aleph Bet. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we'll move on to the next couple of letters and the first Nikud symbol. So let's start. Bo Natril. The third letter of the Aleph Bet is Gimel. The sound of Gimel is G. Let's first see how to write it by hand. Gimel in handwriting. And in print it looks like this. Gimel. They look quite different, don't they? But the good news is that you already can write another Hebrew word. Gag. This means roof in handwriting. Gag. And in print it looks like this. 
gag. Here you may be a little confused. If you were to see this word written, you might want to read it as gug. There is no vowel sound. In Hebrew, the vowels are often not written. You would know that this word is pronounced gag because it has been taught to you before. And this is why the Nikud is so important. The Nikud shows learners of the Hebrew language what vowel sound is used in words, but don't rely on them too much. As you get more experienced with Hebrew, you should be able to remember how to read words, even if the Nikud is not attached. Now it's time to introduce to you the first Nikud. Remember, Nikud are small points and lines that are placed in, under, on top, or beside consonants. The first one has the sound A, just like Aleph. This is Kamatz, and it looks like this. And it's always written right under the consonant letter. Let's write roof a couple more times while pronouncing its sound, ah. So for example, gag in handwriting looks like this. Gag. And in print, gag. Also the word abba has kamats under two of its letters. Abba, and in print version, Abba. So now you can read and write two words in Hebrew using the full vowel system. You can adjust the sound of the letter Gimel by writing a comma right here. Now it is read J, as in the name George. First the gimel, and then the comma on the upper left side. And in print it looks like this. So now let's move to the fourth letter, daled, with the sound of d. Daled. That's it, just one curve for the handwriting. And daled in print looks like this. Daled. So let's make another word with the letter gimel and daled. Here, dag means fish. This will come in very handy whenever you are in a restaurant. Let's write it. Da. G. And now in print. Da. G. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Don't get lost in studying and forget the real world. Find Hebrew letters around you. Don't see any alphabet letters around you? Go to hebrewpod101.com and check out the alphabet transcripts for every lesson dialogue. You may not be able to read them all yet, but you can get a feel of how the Hebrew letters are used in real life. Hi everyone, my name is Yara, and today we're going to talk about top Hebrew verbs which are very useful verbs that will help you in everyday life uh, in your next visit in Israel. Yay! Lelechet, to go. Lelechet uh, also means to walk. Lelechet baregel, to walk by foot. So you can use it as to go on a trip. Lelechet letiyul, to go home. Lelechet abaita. Lavo, to come. Lavo, to come. Like, are you coming to the party? At Ba'ala Mesiba, are you planning to come to the party? At Matachnenet Lavo La Mesiba, come to the party, it'll be fun. Lehagid, to say. Lehagid, Ani Rotsa Lehagid Lachmashu. I want to tell you something. You can only use this verb in this form, at least in modern Hebrew. Lehagid, to say. Uh, you can't use it as I said. It doesn't work like that, only in the infinitive form. להגיד, to say. לשמוע, to hear. בערב אפשר לשמוע את הצפרדעים. In the evening you can hear the frogs. לשמוע. לעשות, to do, to make. לעשות means to do, but it also means to make. Like לעשות בלגן, to make a mess. אל תעשה בלגן, don't make a mess. Or like don't make a big deal. 
אל תעשה עניין. לקחת, to take. Uh, you can use that like in English to take medicine or to take something from one place to another, to take it back. היה לי כאב ראש, אז לקחתי כדור. I had a headache, so I took a pill. לרצות, to want. When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a dancer. כשהייתי קטנה, רציתי להיות רקדנית. רציתי is the first person past tense of לרצות. לחכות, to wait. Like to wait in line. לחכות בתור. חיכיתי שעות בתור לפלאפל. I waited for hours in the line for the falafel. Oh, don't worry, it never happens. לקנות, to buy. אין לי כסף, אז אני לא יכולה לקנות כלום. I don't have money, so I can't buy anything. <laughs> לדעת, to know. How could I know? איך הייתי יכולה לדעת? להיות, to be. כשאני אהיה גדולה, אני רוצה להיות רופאה. When I grow up, I want to be a doctor. להיות. לתת, to give. רציתי לתת לך מתנה. I wanted to give you a present. לחשוב, to think. You should try thinking about other people too. אתה צריך לנסות לחשוב גם על אנשים אחרים. להרגיש, to feel. Did you feel the earthquake? הרגשת את רעידת האדמה? לאהוב, to love. I love cats. אני אוהבת חתולים. I love other stuff too, but like cats are my favorite thing in the world, so... אני אוהבת חתולים. For a male speaker it would be אני אוהב חתולים. Because who doesn't love cats? Yes. לעזוב, to leave, to let go. אני לא רוצה לעזוב את הבית. I don't want to leave home. אל תעזוב את המעקה. Don't let go of the handrail. לעזוב. לעבוד, to work. I don't like working on weekends. אני לא אוהבת לעבוד בסופי שבוע. Nobody does. לנסות, to try. תמשיכי לנסות, בסוף זה יעבוד. Keep trying, eventually it will work. Hopefully. לקבל, to receive. אני אוהבת לקבל מתנות. I love receiving presents. לקבל is to receive, but it can also sometimes mean to get something, to get what you deserve. לקבל מה שמגיע לך. In Hebrew you can also say לקבל מכות, which means to get beat up, and it literally means to receive beating. Can you say that? That's like... Whatever. לדבר, to speak. תפסיק לדבר, אני לא יכולה לשמוע אותך כבר. Stop talking, I can't hear you anymore. לחפש, to search. I've been searching for my glasses for days. אני מחפשת את המשקפיים שלי כבר כמה ימים. למצוא, to find. If you ever watched any Disney movie, you'll know this sentence. למצוא אהבת אמת, to find true love. Uh, obviously you can also use it to find, you know, objects. <laughs> uh, to find your glasses. למצוא את המשקפיים שלך. Uh, yeah, I don't do that very often. I look for them a lot, I don't find them very often. להתקשר, to call. This word literally means to... contact but these days like in modern Hebrew you only use it to say to call someone on the phone. ניסיתי להתקשר אלייך אבל לא ענית. I tried calling you but she didn't answer. Like if you call someone on the street hey that's that's not להתקשר. להתקשר is only on the phone. לאכול. To eat. מה אתה רוצה לאכול? What do you want to eat? And while you're in Israel, make sure to go and have falafel. Go eat falafel. לכו לאכול falafel. לישון, to sleep. לילה טוב, אני הולכת לישון. Good night, I'm going to sleep. Okay, good night, I'm going to sleep. Yes, sleep, לישון. 
Okay, that was the end. Thank you so much for watching Top Hebrew Verbs. Which verb do you use the most? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Ah, oh, now I get it. It's so hot in here. Yes! <gasps>
So let's start. בואו נתחיל. The fifth Hebrew letter is hey. Hey sound is ha, but it can also sound like a. You will see how it changes in a second. Let's first write it in handwriting. Hey. The print version is very similar. Hey. Make sure to keep hey curved while handwriting, but use sharp angles in print. So, as I mentioned, hey can sound like both ha and a. The word ahava uses it in both ways. When hey appears in the end of the word, it will always sound as a. Ahava is love in Hebrew. Let's try to write it down. A, pronounced ha. Remember the sound here is V, so we don't need a dot of bet. Pronounce A. Let's do it once more in handwriting. Ahava. Ahava. Isn't it a beautiful word with a beautiful curved shape? Now let's do it in print. A. Ha. Va. So if you want to add the full Nikud for this word, we need to use a new Nikud symbol, patach. Just like kamatz from last lesson, patach has the sound of a. Now remember, when you write in modern Hebrew, you don't need to use the Nikud system. It is there mostly for you to read, especially when learning new vocabulary, or if you want to study the Hebrew Bible. Now let's spell Ahava with a full Nikud. Ahava. A-ha-va. Ahava. Here's the print version. Here you saw how the letter Hey can sound in two different ways. So you already know five Hebrew letters and several words. Don't forget to practice the characters in both handwriting and print. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Doesn't hey from this lesson sound like hey in English? When you say hello to your friends? That's exactly the sound for the Hebrew letter hey. Now you can think of the letter hey when saying hello to your friends and memorize it better. Hi everyone! Welcome to Top Hebrew Words. My name is Yara and today our top words will be 15 favorite words chosen by fans, which is even more fun than usual. So I am genuinely excited to find out what you chose. So let's start. Ahava, love. Ahava is the noun and the verb is le'ehov, to love. Uh, you can use it. Um, to describe your love for people, animals, clothes, or anything. My biggest love is cats. Oh, don't worry, I like you too. And baya, no problem. Okay, for example, in the very Israeli phrase, Can you do me a favor? No problem. Altidag, don't worry. Ah, altidag, it'll be okay. For example, אל תדאג, טיפלתי בזה. Don't worry, I took care of it. אימא, mother. We don't have a mother-mom thing. It's always אימא. תראי אימא, אני ביוטיוב. Look, mom, I'm on YouTube. Hey! אני מצטער. I'm sorry. אני מצטער. Or for a female speaker, אני מצטערת. I'm sorry. אני מצטערת ששפכתי עלייך את כוס הקפה שלי. I'm sorry I spilled my coffee on you. שמח, happy. יום הולדת שמח, happy birthday. For a female it will be שמחה. מיטה, bed. יורד גשם בחוץ, אז אני רוצה להישאר במיטה כל היום. It's raining outside, so I want to stay in bed all day long. להתראות, see you. So you say it when you part with somebody. Okay, later on. 
which literally means something like to see each other. להתראות בפעם הבאה. See you next time. כבוד, respect. כבוד is the noun, but you can also use it as a verb, לכבד, to respect someone. There is this uh, iconic Israeli movie from the 70s, 70s or 80s, uh, called Kazablan. And it was a musical, and one of the most famous songs uh, from that movie is about respect. The main line is, כולם היו יודעים אז טוב מאוד, למי יש יותר כבוד? Uh, everyone would then know very well who has the most respect. <laughs> yeah, it sounds it sound a bit funny, but... I didn't write it, so... ללמוד, to learn. It can mean to learn something new, it can mean to uh, study, and it can also mean what you do in school. Like, in English you would ask, what university do you go to? And in Hebrew you would ask, באיזו אוניברסיטה את לומדת? אתה לומד, which means, what university do you learn in? So, yeah. שפה, language. Safa also means a lip. And another word for language in Hebrew is Lashon, which also means tongue. Ezo Safa at Rotsalil Mod. What language do you want to learn? Gadol. Awesome. Gadol. Awesome. Uh, Gadol literally means big or large, but you say it as awesome, yeah. Gadol. Echayaba of A. היה גדול. Uh, how was the show? Awesome. It was awesome. Bis. Bite. A very useful word is the word bis, which means a bite. אפשר לקבל bis מהפלאפל שלך? Can I have a bite of your falafel? Be generous. Give people a bite of your falafel. חירות. Freedom. Uh, freedom has two words. חופש and חירות. You can use the word חופש for a vacation from school, but חירות is a much bigger word. And you can hear it a lot in Pesach, in Passover, in the term לצאת מעבדות לחירות, to go from slavery to freedom. שלום, peace. שלום means peace. It can be used as hello, and it, it, it is used mostly as hello. When I was a little girl, there was a famous children's song uh, named Shalom Himila Shimushit. Shalom is a useful word, which is nice. This is it. These were the 15 top Hebrew words that you chose, and thank you for that. So don't forget to check out the website, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye! <laughs> Shalom, אני יאנה. Hi everybody, I'm Yana. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's עברית בשלוש דקות. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Hebrew. In the last lesson, we learned the most common forms of greetings in Hebrew. Do you remember them? In this lesson, we are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you're asking it in Hebrew, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you're saying, even if the answer is no. As already mentioned in previous lessons, in Hebrew there is a difference between male and female speech. So if you want to ask a woman, say, At medaberet anglit? At medaberet anglit? In Hebrew, verbs change depending on the pronoun that is used according to the gender of both the speaker and the addressee. At, in this case, is the female pronoun for you. So the verb medaberet, which means speak, refers to a female. For example, if I said, I speak English, it will be Ani medaberet anglit. Ani, as we learned already, means I am. Ani is the only way you can say I am in Hebrew, regardless of one's gender. Then, medaberet is the female conjugation for speak, or speaking. So, Ani medaberet anglit will be used only by a female speaker. On the other hand, if you're asking a man if he speaks English, you say, 
אתה מדבר אנגלית, אתה מדבר אנגלית, אתה in this case is the male pronoun for you, so the verb מדבר, which means speak, refers to a man only. So if you're a man and want to say I speak English, it will be אני מדבר אנגלית. It is important to notice that in Hebrew the pronoun and the verb change according to female, male, and also to singular or plural of the same sentence. So basically there are four ways to say each phrase. But don't worry, we will talk more about that later. For now, please only remember that you can use both at מדברת אנגלית and אתה מדבר אנגלית only if you are addressing one person. So let's review them once again. את מדברת אנגלית if you are asking a woman and אתה מדבר אנגלית if you are asking a man. Adding סליחה, excuse me, the sentence becomes even more polite. סליחה, את מדברת אנגלית? סליחה, את מדברת אנגלית? Or סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? סליחה, אתה מדבר אנגלית? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. כן, yes, כן. קצת, a little, קצת. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. Or, לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. No, I don't speak English. לא, אני לא מדבר אנגלית. לא, אני לא מדברת אנגלית. To make every sentence negative in Hebrew, you only have to add לא before the verb, which simply means no. It's easy, isn't it? Now it's time for Yana's insights. For those of you who are not only English speakers, you can obviously use this question with any language you need. Israeli people study other European languages at school, so maybe you will get lucky. Just substitute Anglit with Rusit for Russian, Italkit for Italian, Sfaradit for Spanish, and Germanit for German. Hi everybody, Jana here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Hebrew questions. The question for this lesson is, how can you possibly read Hebrew if it doesn't have any vowels? The simple answer to this question is that people who are fluent in Hebrew know which vowels go with different words. For someone who knows any language well, it's really not as hard as it sounds. Try it. Here's a famous quote in English translation which the vowels removed. Take a minute to read this. Can you figure it out? That which is hateful to you do not do to your fellow. Was it easier than you thought? Most English speakers don't practice this skill much, but imagine if you did this all the time. In reality, there are a few characters used sometimes to indicate vowel sounds in Hebrew, and even native speakers use them. I'll explain more about this in a later lesson. You now know how native speakers can read Hebrew without vowels. But what about Hebrew learners? There are a couple systems available to help non-native or beginner speakers read Hebrew text. The most common of these is the Nikud. Here's an example. Do you see these dots and marks? They represent the vowel sounds and are called Nikud. We go over this system in more detail in our Hebrew Alphabet Made Easy series. But for now, take comfort that there is help. There is also a number of system of Roman transliteration. These almost always include vowels to help you read. For example, the sentence above can be read Toch mispar shavuot achanut mizgera. All beginner materials at HebrewPod101.com include this kind of romanization. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Lehitraot! 
שלום, אני יאנה. Welcome to HebrewPod101.com's אלף בית בקלי קלות. The fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn the Hebrew alphabet. The אלף בית. In the last lesson we learned to write the most important word in Hebrew. אהבה, the word for love. Do you remember the ניקוד for אהבה? If you are not feeling confident about it, review the last lesson before continuing on from here. In this lesson, we will learn one new Hebrew letter and three more Nikud. Are you ready? So let's start. Bo natchil. The sixth letter is Vav. The sound of Vav is V or O or U. And it's written like this. That's it. Vav has only one stroke from top to the bottom. The print version is the same for Vav, with only a small difference. In Hebrew, Vav is not only the name of the character, it's also a word by itself. It means a hook. Doesn't Vav look like a hook? You can write this word like this. It's just the letter Vav, two times. If you want to add Nikud, it will look like this. Now we move on to the next Nikud symbol, Chirik, with a sound E, like in C. It's just one dot under the letter, E. Now you can write a very common name, one that belongs to the second and perhaps most famous king of the ancient kingdom of Israel, David. It's written with two Dalet and one Vav. The Nikud here is important, Otherwise, it can have different pronunciation and meaning. Let's write this word. David. And now in print. David. The next Nikud for this lesson is Shuruk, with a sound U. This is how you make Vav sound like U. For example, if we take the same letters from David and instead of Chirik, we add Shuruk, it will be Dud, electric water heater. Perhaps now you can appreciate the power of learning the Nikud when you're first studying Hebrew. Let's write this word. Dud. And now in print. Dud. Notice how Shuruk goes to the left of the Vav. Seem complicated? Don't worry, we will review them all at the end of this lesson. But not before we will learn the last Nikud for today. Cholam Male, with a sound of O. This is how you make Vav sound like O. Let's write this. D, O, D, Dod. And now in print. Dod. Notice that Cholam Male appears above the Vav. Now, Shuruk and Cholam Male are only written with the letter Vav and not with any other letter. Chirik, however, will appear below other letters. Now let's see all the last three examples together and make sense of them. First, we had David. Dud and Dod. Now let's have a short quiz. I'll show you the Nikud symbol next to a letter and you have to pronounce its sound. Ready? A. U. E. O. A. Now it's time for Yana's insights. Since you will not see any Nikud in modern readings in Israel, you will have to guess, by the context of the sentence, which pronunciation and meaning it has. It all comes with the experience of studying Hebrew vocabulary. Another tip is when writing the letter Vav, it is important to keep the length of the stroke inside the frame. Otherwise, it becomes a different letter. But that's for later. So in this lesson, we studied the letter Vav and three Nikud in Hebrew. Chirik, Shuruk, and Cholam Male. Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Hebrew Pronunciation Guide.
In this lesson, you'll learn the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. These are common mistakes that students of Hebrew tend to make. So pay close attention and make sure that you don't make these same mistakes too. Are you ready? Then let's get started. You will recognize the schwa vowel by the two vertical dots underneath the consonant. In Hebrew, many words contain a schwa vowel. There are three different kinds of schwa vowels. The first kind is a short E-like sound. Le. The second is a full stop on the consonant it's underneath. Le hitlabesh. And the third is a move to the next consonant without a vowel. Ptucha. The resulting combination of consonants often feels unnatural to learners of Hebrew. Kvisa. Instead of properly combining these letters, new speakers often put a short vowel between the two. In order to correct this problem, Hebrew students should practice these special letter combinations. Listen to the examples. Gdola. Ktana. Zman. Number two, the Hebrew letter resh. This is a problematic letter for learners of Hebrew, particularly for English speakers, because this R sound does not exist in English. The Hebrew R sound is similar to the German or French R. Unlike the English R, which is pronounced with the tip of the tongue at the front of the mouth, the Hebrew R is pronounced using the back of the tongue with a slight roll. You can think of it like gargling air at the back of your throat. Listen to the following examples. Kar, Rishon. Horim. We'll teach you how to pronounce this sound in lesson six. Number three, misplacing stress. A common mistake for new speakers of Hebrew is the misplacement of stress. In the beginning, most foreign speakers model their stress patterns after their native language. Correcting this is very easy because most Hebrew words are stressed on the last syllable. Pay attention to the stress pattern in the following Hebrew words. Bgadim. Yalda. Lilmod. When words aren't stressed on the last syllable, they are part of a very specific group of words, all containing a similar stress pattern. Medaberet. Sefer. Tapuach. We'll teach you how to speak Hebrew with a correct stress in lesson eight. Number four, foreign words in Hebrew. When you see a word you recognize from your own language in Hebrew, your first instinct is to pronounce it like it is in your own language. However, many foreign words in Hebrew have been modified to have different stress patterns. They may even use different sounds altogether. Pay attention to how native speakers pronounce these words, and you'll learn them quickly. Listen to Yara. Universita. Televisia. Sandwich. Number five. While this letter is usually difficult for foreign speakers to pronounce correctly in the beginning, it is also one that many people perfect with a good amount of practice. This is a guttural H pronounced at the back of the throat. It has a bad reputation because it sounds as though you're bringing up phlegm from your throat. It's possible that non-native speakers are afraid to make this sound, and this is why it has become known as a difficult Hebrew letter to pronounce. There's no need to be afraid of this letter because this sound is part of what gives Hebrew its uniqueness. Listen and repeat alongside Yara. Cheder. Chavera. Bachar. Noach. Practice often, and you'll be sure to master this elusive sound in no time. Now you know the top five Hebrew pronunciation mistakes to avoid. Try to be careful so that you don't make the same mistakes.